was good, was good, was good. All my good people out there, hit that like, hit that subscribe button for me, man. You back tuned to your boy Charlie's Vision right here. This is a great and amazing YouTube channel. You need to come and check out all the spiritual enlightenment and knowledge that I got on this channel, man. A lot of great material. Y'all need to come get into that library and start building with me. You dig what I'm saying? But today, man, we got some stuff we can even talk about the address. I just watched the uh, some of the J um, Jay Stone interview or whatever, and he was talking a little bit about Nip. We're going to talk about that. And I also got a couple of clips that if you're not updated on the case and all the situations that's been going on with it and all the rumors and speculations that's been going on out here, I'm going to get you updated, man. I got a lot of material. You need to stay tuned to this whole video. You dig what I'm saying? But anyway, during the interview, he was talking about that Nipsey Hussle had a bunch of um, uh, music that hasn't been released yet that he had been working on, that he had been putting together. You know what I mean? You know how when they, people do their albums and stuff, they take, they pick like maybe seven, maybe eight, maybe nine songs off and leave the rest. They done, done like a thousand songs, one session, you know what I mean, uh, for one album, but they only picked like 10 or 18 of those songs. And like I say, uh, Victory Lot was in the last project that was about to be released by Nip. Nip was working on a new project and he also had old material like Tupac back in the day remember Tupac had like all these stuff in the crates that ain't nobody never heard of before and basically what they said with, with Stone and I'm saying I guess uh Sam and everybody basically saying that Nip got so much in the crates man good exclusive stuff that ain't nobody ever seen or nobody heard yet and when they come out all everybody that's fans of Nip like myself we can't wait you know what I mean when Nip when, when they drop that Black Sam and them drop that you know that project gonna be good, man. Platinum. You know what I mean, gonna sell worldwide. It's gonna do big numbers, man. I can't wait, man. They say they got a whole bunch of stuff in the crates with Nip. You dig what I'm saying? But like I told y'all before, man, I can't wait. I'm just telling you, I can't wait. You know what I mean? But that, that that's basically what they saying. They got some more stuff in the crates and stuff like that. I've been looking up, trying to figure out what they doing for off the case and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I've been hearing a lot of people been saying that they feel like Eric Holder might get off. Cause I just heard about the Mo Three guy. And I seen it all over social media. They were trying to say he was about to get out. You know what I mean? So I, I don't really know how they doing these cases like that. But people were saying basically uh, uh, Eric Holden had to give up all these sources and stuff like that. They put him on the, the, the hit situation and, and, and who paid him this and that. He already came forward before and gave information on who paid him this and who, who, who. You know what I'm saying? Everybody already knew that this wasn't a situation where it was like some random thing, you know what I'm saying, they try to make, spin that in the, social, in the media, so it was some random head and random thing, you know what I'm saying, but we, as people that looked at the case, looked at the situation, inspired to seeing all the stuff that was going on, all the hits to the body and stuff like that, and realized, man, somebody paid this kid off to do this type of thing, man, you know what I'm saying, all the wise ones, like I say, some people be <laughs> all in the clouds somewhere, but we know the real, you know what I'm saying, then the most three thing, I heard that, uh, they, they they basically had all on social media that uh basically um what's this what's your boy Yellow Beasy they say he been trying to stay out of Texas you know what I'm saying and stay away from that uh Dallas or whatever you know what I'm saying stay out of the way you know what I'm saying and they was basically saying Trap Boy Freddie was putting too much heat on him. you know what I'm saying put too much heat on him right now so I don't know how he getting out early if he giving them names I'm talking this, this I'm talking about Yellow Beasy right now I don't know if he giving them names or what's the case going on with this situation but he, he, homie said his lawyer said he coming home soon. And it's the Mo 3 situation. But uh, the Nipsey Hustle thing, it's going to have to be the same situation. Somebody, you're going to have to be giving up some names or saying some stuff like that. That's the snakes thing. What's 6 ix 9 did? Somebody's going to have to be talking. Somebody's going to have to be telling. I mean, factual. Like, that's the only way you're getting less time. you on live camera doing this. You know what I'm saying? Like I told you, you know who you said pay them. They got pulled. You know what I'm saying? So it, it wouldn't be surprising if nigga all of a sudden be change his name, get changed, and he in a whole nother location or something like that. Wouldn't surprise me. You know what I'm saying? Like, but like I say, man, this type of situation, we already know the, the, the go-to and all that about this. Man, come on, man. This is not a hard thing to figure out. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. The man had his hand in real estate. He was changing up California. You know what I'm saying? He was bringing everybody together. what they do to the Black Panthers? They try to destroy it. Anytime we come together as a culture, right? And try to put everything together the right proper way. They always try to tie them down, G. Come on, man. Like, factually, we know this already. 
So some of the stuff that, that was going on with the NIP and all the, the things with the, the David Ross and all, all the stuff that we, we, we piled up and got the information on, we know that this stemmed from something deeper than somebody talking about some snitching and all of that. Come on, man. You know, man, this whole thing, they was planning that the whole time. They was waiting for an opportunity to catch him at the store like that. You know what I mean? What we call lacking because he come in a place where he feel comfortable. These all his homies and stuff like that. But somebody got their eye in the wicked place. That's normal. That's why I always tell niggas, man, we all try to save the hood and save niggas in the hood. But the reality is niggas don't want to be saved. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and we seeing a cycle of uh, good, great leaders, great individuals, great people being towed down by the system. Because they don't want to see the Nipsey Hustles and the Meat Mills and all these big name individuals bring the communities together. They'd rather see it to be destroyed. They put liquor stores on every block next to the hood. Gun stores, all of that. They want to see the destruction of the black man, dog. Come on, if we ain't getting knowledge of self or, or bringing up our wisdom, we're going to fall victim right into this type of shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, come on, man. Like, we would have to be damn near stupid to not see what this shit was. You know what I mean? Like, come on, bro. You talking about a nigga you knew all your life. That's the type of nigga they use to come get you because you feel comfortable around him. My man Tim Tim ain't going to come run around the corner and pop me. That's my man's. Not knowing he getting paid the whole time to do this. You know what I'm saying? But, like, you know what I'm saying? The person you feel the most comfortable with is your enemies going to always use that to try to get close to you to try to take you down. They been had recordings of Nip and everything. They were doing the investigations and all of that. So, I'm saying, people that was close to him. So, come on, man. This is not nothing too hard to figure out to see that this was a play put in play. You know what I'm saying? It was a play put in. You know what I'm saying? People like it. It's going to be a lot of ratting going on for this young man to get out or the connections of the higher people going to release him. But I think it work in their favor by letting them stay in the cell and take the blame for everything. But if that man get to doing this, them names going to get exposed. All on the, It's all on the internet already, man. But them names going to get exposed. Every name that was involved with this situation. You know what I mean? Because the, 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 the motive and the moral to the story is I want what you got. And I want to keep the system the way it is. I want control of this neighborhood. Not you. You're not going to take this. And that's what they're doing. He's ready to create. Think about it, man. All the niggas that had felonies and niggas that coming home from hard times and shit like that. He giving them jobs. He giving them opportunity. Think about it. You can't feed your family. They won't hire you nowhere. And you got a man that come up and say, you know what? All my soldiers, man, from the 60s, all my guys in here that I respect, that I got love for, I'm going to put them on. I'm going to make sure they eat. I'm going to make sure they scrape and know what they say. This Nipsey Hussle guy, I don't like him. We're going to get him out of the way. That's what they said, bro. Because they seen his glow. His glow was to bring unity to the community, not just that. He was also educating the youth by putting these programs in to help them better themselves and their situations so they will be strong leaders after him. See, he had a plan beyond with everybody seeing him rap videos with jewelry and shit like that. He give you that for this some entertainment shit. But down back, when you really listen to Nip in his interviews, he's like a mixture of J. Cole and Davies. Because you see the gangster and you see the educational part. Because Nip was on a higher level. Niggas want no stupid nigga out here in any form or fashion. That's why they want to take niggas out like that. The, Mar the Michael Masters, the Martin Luther King. All the black leaders that come with a great idea to create change in a positive way. Boom, 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 boom. Now we like, oh, he's just some gang banger. He out here gang banging. That's all. That's the type, that's the type of stamp they put on. Now they blaming Big U and all these other individuals. That's the cop out. Come on now. Like, we smart enough, we wise enough to understand that Nip stood for something bigger and greater. Not for just himself, for his family, his community, and for black people all over the world. To not only just be workers, but owners. And being a respectable person in the community that's willing to bring change. They don't want to see that. When they see Master P, and he moving militant like he moving... But he's causing change in each environment. He's giving guys opportunity. He's changing the narrative. You see all these black people on these syrups and all of that, but they don't own anything. They just a label in the face for something. Ownership is what Nick was trying to teach guys. 
The same thing Master Peter teaching guys. The same thing Dame Desmond teaching guys. Is the changing the narrative that we all fall victim to. And that's not owning our own things. Masters and, and properties and things of that nature. That's what this guy was bringing forth to the community. This is what this guy was standing for. They didn't want to see that. They didn't want to see greatness shine bright. They didn't want that light to be like that. When the man passed away, they brought bloods, crypts. I'm talking about every gang in, in L.A. together to walk and to stand in his name because that's what he was standing for and that's what he was trying to change. See, when you have a great leader like that, they try to tear him down because they don't want to see him striving and doing something great and doing something popular. They want to tear down every piece, everything that you're doing because they know it's going to educate these youth into doing something positive and they don't want to see it. They don't want to see the greatness of what he was standing for. But you going to tell you one thing. Us as people got to move that legacy forward. The marathon going marathon to keep continually and we're going to keep moving in a positive way because the coach need us, bro. We can go around shooting each other. Oh, that's op this, op that. But in reality, we got to understand that we need one another to stand as a group and as, as a unity and to build the youth and educate them and teach them that Ownership is the only way you have control in your community. You know what I mean? All these billions of dollars that's going into these guys' pockets, and they're not thinking about the community. They're thinking about putting stuff in the community that destroys the community. Drugs, alcohol, guns. When you start removing those things from the community and putting in centers that help kids educate themselves, this is when you start to see a development change when people now all around can be able to survive and take care of their family. So let, let me not talk you to death, let me not go too deep, but let me tell you something. When you say Nipsey Hussle, we all understood with the doc, the CD documentaries and all the things that he was trying to put before you. From not only just being educated here, but cleansing the body of all the negative mucus by taking CMOS and the, the battle rats and things of that nature to cleanse the body up, to get your soul right, to meditate, to be one with God, you know what I'm saying? And understand that. We as leaders got to stand together and bring everybody together, man. It, ain't it don't take nothing for me to say, yeah, young boy, go over there, pull that trigger. But it take a lot for me to tell him, bro, go to school to finish, bro. Go to school to finish, bro. We got programs out here that's going to put you in a great working situation. And then you can begin to own and do different things. But let's build you up in a positive sense where you don't have to sell drugs. You don't have to kill people in the community. You don't have to gang bang. But you can have a different life. If you're willing to listen to the wisdom that's coming from the, the leaders in the community that been there, done that, from the Jay-Z's, the Diddy's, the different people that came from that, 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 that environment that's causing change now, that they understood the destruction that they put into the community and they wised up to understand that the only way to change the narrative in this lifetime is by moving in a different light. And that's what Nip was standing for. That was Nip, what Nip was doing. Every great leader that was about to cause big changes, which they did in any way within their demise, as far as Michael Madison, the Martin Luther Kings, and, and many more great black leaders that stood for the communities, they take it down. Black Panther, let's take it down. Let's make blood the Crips out of Black Panther and let, let's let black people fight against one another and kill each other. You know what I'm saying? Because it's all right off for them. It's them owning it. The same thing with the record companies, dog. When we sit back and we like, damn, why is all these young kids beefing with none another? Then niggas getting laid out. You know what I'm saying? They get laid out in the middle of the street and everybody like, damn, this and that. Because the message is for them to do that. That's what they push it. That wasn't what Nip was standing for. That's not what all the great black leaders were standing for. They were standing for change, dog. Change. We got to wise up. Because if we don't use this, you know what I mean? Start moving off that emotional marshmallow shit and start shooting our own brethren and killing our own brethren for jewelry and, and for uh, shit that don't matter. When you get in the grave, that shit don't mean nothing, dog. It's all about legacy. Let it, legacy is what you want to leave behind. The ownership, the legacy of your name and all the great things you created in your community that made you the man you are today. And that's what Nip stood for, man. Not this bullshit these niggas trying to push in the social media network. Why people like myself understand what he was coming with and what he was trying to teach and what he was trying to do for the community and the kids that was out there. 
I said a mouthful, guys. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button for me. I got the clips at the end of this video. Y'all can watch some of the, the updates and stuff like that that, that came out. If you ain't been following the case, I got it all on the end of this video. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Go down to the description box right now. Got a lot of great and amazing treats for you. I'm working independent. You know what I mean? Doing my thing, dog. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all so much. Stay tuned. This channel got it all up here. If you ain't subscribed, subscribe to this channel. I'm talking about I got the wisdom. I got the knowledge. I got everything on this channel. And news updates. Thank you. Appreciate your love, G. What's good? What's good, gang? All my good people out there, man. Love, peace, joy, man. Peace to my good guys out there, man. All respect to everybody, man. Hey, listen, man, if you got a business, small business or business in general, or you have a YouTube channel and you need more views or more promotion for your channel or your business, please go to my description right now. Man. I got a program that will set you up that will help you get more views, more subscribers. Also, will help you promote your T-shirt brand or whatever business that you're involved in. If you need help, you need assistance right now, man, go to the description box. I got a program that's lit. It's just designed to help you to build your brand up and be able to get it out to the people that you're trying to engage with. But uh, today we got a dope show, an amazing show, man. I know a lot of people have been coming to me, asking me, man, why haven't I uh, digged into watching the video again and, and figuring out like all the truth that's being exposed and, and put to the, the to the front. You dig what I'm saying? And um, I went back and looked at some of the videos, right? And... I'm still, every time I look at the video, even though I see it slowed down and stuff like that, when I look at cowboy stories, man, I, 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 I disrespectfully, I'm just being respectfully when I say that, none of what he's, he's been saying has been true from the, the part about him going into the burger joint to get his uh, his lunch and stuff that was false him being in tears at the store that was false him running out to nip at the time that was false if you look at the period of time that he actually came outside to run towards nip you know what i mean it, it was like way way later all the times was off when it come down to cowboy and then it's it's so ironic man within the paperwork and the testimonies that we have gotten about the round Paul and the uh, Eric Holder situation, they were saying that he doubted them up and he handed them something like that, which was in the paperwork. See, the thing is, when uh, Cowboy was in the courtroom, he couldn't do nothing but tell the truth. So he, we found on the end room, the one that got the uh, burger out of the burger spot. But like I say, it was cameras in the burger spots, cameras at the uh, the phone store. You know what I mean? And when I look at all of it, it's crazy because uh. I went back, like I said, I went back and looked at the videos, and I was, and, and we find out we see Eric Holder. Uh, he walks up first. The, the first, uh, if, if you want to start the whole story from the beginning, uh, that Nip was supposed to be coming to the woods, the store, or whatever. You know what I mean? And he came there, and I guess he seen Ron Paul out there. He came. He haven't seen him in a while. I mean, that's what, what Cowboy was putting out in his statements that he haven't seen Ron Paul in a while. I guess they haven't talked in a good while or whatever. He came out, got out of the car. I wanted to talk to him or chop it up with him or whatever. Like I say, the story's been changing a lot from the Carrie Lintham story to a lot of things that Cowboy was saying that have not been accurate. You can't really check a list on Cowboy's story because it changed a lot of time and his stories wasn't accurate. Once, once they actually put out the video footage of the actual scene and what was going on, you, you realize that things changed. For instance, when he said that uh, Nipsey Hussle came to the store you know what I'm saying? And he seen Ron Paul, he got out of the car, went to greet him, chopped it up with him. And he said, Ron Paul, him, and uh, all three of them was outside. And then I guess Eric Holder pulled up or whatever with the young lady. And Nip seen them in the car and was like, that's, is that shitty right there? You know what I mean? And I guess, you know what I mean, they chopped it up. And then he, he was uh, confronting them about the paperwork and stuff like that, that people were saying was out on him. And, and Eric was basically saying that people was just hating on his name and trying to put him in the dirt. You know what I mean? And Cowboy was saying that if it wasn't no big deal coming from the nip side, but evidently something was a big deal. You know what I mean? Like I say, man, either you either you ran the play or it was designed anger. You know what I mean? But I, like I told you before, I, I already told y'all this 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 wasn't a situation where somebody just got mad. I believe it was all put together just about just off what Cowboy said himself. Like Cowboy basically said, Nip never just get out of the car and be coming out there. He do all these compass, you know what I mean, do a little drop offs or whatever and, and just get out of there. For him to actually be sitting outside for that long period of time like that, I always felt that it was a somebody ran the play. 
You know what I mean? Then we got the Kerry Link. They said when Kerry Linkton pulled up, you know what I'm saying, with his peoples or whatever, uh, Eric Holder, you know I mean, walked away. You know what I mean? He didn't even walk towards them when, when, when he seen uh, Kerry Linkton. You know, like I said, I don't know if there was a fear base or what that was about, you know what I mean? But they say that homeboy backed all the way up, you know what I'm saying? So when he came over there, he squeezed and shot. So I guess he felt like uh, Kerry Linkton was a threat to him towards him or something like that, you know what I mean? So... It's a weird scenario and situation. What, what 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 loses me a lot of times is everybody's story and then the actual camera footage. You know what I mean? Because I they, they did the officer statements or when they came on the scene, they seen two guys on the floor on the ground, three guys on the ground. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? And um, my whole my whole confusion with this whole situation. You know what I mean? Like I said, I don't, I don't I don't put nothing on nobody to be hurt or nothing like that. But my thing is, how is it that Kerry Lingham and Kerry, I think I think this is Kerry Lingham's brother or whatever, get hit and not Rem Paul? That's the thing that's always confusing me. That if he came up and he's squeezing, he got to think about. It, he gave nip eleven shots, right? And if, if he coming up and he see all these guys, like Rem Paul must run super fast. You know what I mean? But I ain't never known about to run faster than the bullet. I'm like, why is it that he didn't? Aim at him. Was it was it a fear base or what was that about? You know what I mean. I'm like, why everybody got 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 popped? You know what I'm saying. But except for him, that was weird to me. You know what I mean. But like I said, I'm 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 not gonna go that far with it. But I'm just saying, like it's weird and strange to me. Unless he really like, I don't know, man. It just seemed weird to me because Cowboy was even saying he felt the energy. Cause like I always tell people, man. Y'all know I got my spiritual channel, man. Charlie's Vision. Y'all come over there, check that out. I'm going to tell y'all something. I've been telling people this for a long while, and I've been trying to break this down to people. It's an energy that come upon people where they can feel when something is about to go down or feel something. Have you ever just been outside or been with your friends and somebody came around and you knew something was good to happen? You could feel the energy shift. Bro, we all got the energy and our angels are all around us telling us stuff. But a lot of times we don't listen to it because we want to be macho and all of that type of thing. Not to get too deep on the spiritual sense. I'm just trying to tell you, a lot of times when these type of events or situations happen, you can feel the energy in the room shifting. You can tell, like, it's something about to go down. Now, Cowboy was saying he felt uncomfortable about something. You know what I mean? He felt like the energy was going into a place of darkness. Now, if you... Say Eric Holder was known as a head buster within the streets. I mean, I'm contra I mean, just being real, if that statement came up, but the way he said it was handled and the way he was talking about his it, it was like, nah, bro, it ain't that. You know what I mean? Like Nick was talking to him and it wasn't like a, a argument or, or or a thing where it was like going to another level, you know what I mean? Or it wasn't no like 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 above the realm when, when Pop was messing with Marlon Wayne's kicking him down type of thing. He won't say Nick was carrying it to that extent. Like, get out of here. You know what I mean? Like, on some plan type of thing. You know what I mean? But, like I say, he said Eric Holder started talking about his music and stuff like that. It seemed like the conversation still was continuing on, even after Nip was asking about the paperwork situation. So, my confusion still come back. <clears throat> Eric Holder comes back. He popped Linkham. He popped um, Linkham Peoples. He popped Nip. But he ain't get Rem Paul. And I, that's the part that's weird to me. Like, it's strange, right? You know what I mean? I just, I, I, I don't understand how is that even, like, possible? How can you have uh, let off 11 shots and nip and everybody around, but you, you never never aim at this person's uh, angle? I'm like, what? why why was that? Like I said, I don't, I don't wish nothing on nobody, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't design for nobody to, 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 to be God or nothing like that. But I'm like, I felt like if that was the case, I felt like everybody knew the energy was off at that point. And Rand Paul knew Cowboy knew everybody knew the energy off his stuff for Kerry Linkham and his peoples that walked up. You know what I mean? Like I say, there's a lot of cover up, there's a lot of scheming, and there's a lot of people that's moving pieces around that's not being showed to the public. Like I say, you got all different type of organizations working together for the same goal. And I feel like once you get people involved as street guys from the hood, Paying them off and giving them money for doing things because it's, it's bigger business than people understand. The influence of a Nipsey, I mean, uh, of Nipsey, uh, it, 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 it's unbelievable, period. You know what I mean? I was just having an influence like that. You know what I mean? Being able to influence people that have Jay Z, the Diddy's, the big time 50 cents, all these big guys in the game, the games, all these big people in the game willing to help you build these different things for the community to help the kids and be able to be educate them and give them an opportunity to go to colleges or build their own businesses and just have freedom. 
You know, like, so it's like, it's, it's deeper than what people making it out to be. You know what I mean? Even when I was listening to the Spider Lo in the, uh, interview, and he was saying like, when we go back to biblical times, we don't even really know what really happened in those stories and what was really the reason behind why they did these different things to, you know what I mean? The people in the Bible and things of that nature. So, so when we look at these stories and we see the pieces moving around and we see the camera footage and we identify that this guy came up and did this and we see the young lady and all these things going on and then Kyle was feeling like little nip. He probably looked at Nip and was like, come here, Nip, like, Nip. Like, he was probably trying to make him come in, but he, I don't think he was aggressively telling him to come in. He probably was like, Nip, come here, like, you know what I mean? Nip probably was still having a conversation, thinking that everything was regular when the whole time every, somebody had a, a scheme in place. You know what I mean? Like I say, some people say it was cowboys. Some people got, got different individuals that was there planning this whole scene out. But like I say, man... It's definitely involving higher power, higher enforcers, and people that have connections to be able to know the inside intel. In the two time, we 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 finding out and seeing that it's a lot. It's recordings of Nip of saying different things and videos starting to come out to try to bash his name, like they doing all the people that's been get, having little issues and stuff like that. They put all these bad videos to try to make them look bad and stuff like that. You know what I mean? But like I I, I keep telling people, man, it's, it's the world we live in, man, and, and, and like I said, I just did uh, another uh, drunk about this. The world we live in, like the richer you get, the more powerful you get. It's so hard to find people that really love you, care about you, and, and willing to, to, to make sure you're okay. You know what I mean? Because in this world, everybody's for themselves. You know what I mean? You know, you never know what opportunities people was presented for to actually do a play like this or to make something like this happen. Because in reality, and when you sit back and think about it, Somebody believed that they was going to get extra and, and was going to be in a better predicament. Now, we've seen the Cowboy interview where he felt like, oh, uh, if he was going to get paid to do this and that's this and that, you know what I mean, and, and then go to jail, like that, that, that don't make sense. Well, it makes sense if you sit back and look at the case. When you look at the case, everybody that said something in the statements are going to get thrown out because none of it makes sense, right? You know what I mean, even the girl that got in the car said she didn't know where he had a gun or he didn't know. Now, she's saying stuff that don't even make sense. Like, literally, like, everything in her statement didn't make no type of sense. Like, anybody with common sense know that you know he got out of the car with those things in his hand. You know that. You know he got out of the car with the guns, and you've seen the smoke coming from him. You know what he did. And, 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 and to act like you didn't know what he did is ridiculous. Like, come on now. But I, like I said, I go back to say from all the statements that we heard from everybody within this case so far, we already know they're going back to court and figure it all out even deeper and, and going more in depth. I think by the time being so prolonged, I just feel like a lot about everybody rehearsing their lines and putting their stories together and, you know what I mean? Like putting these statements together with lawyer teams and come on, bro. Like, and, and sis, whoever listening, like at this time, everybody got lawyered up. Everybody got all this protection, all these things going together. And it's, and it's saying, it's seeming like they trying to let this man get out. And what's the, what you going to do? They going to put him in witness protection. You know what I mean? And, and he going to be in the mountain somewhere. Nobody ain't going to know it yet. You know what I mean? Like I said, that's, that's how the game roll, bro. Like it's, it's a dirty game. You know what I'm saying? When you're getting money, getting power, and you creating things within the community, and you're giving everybody the opportunity to be bigger, stronger, and wiser. And I think just in general, they, they are afraid of to see, uh, uh, to be real. I'm going to just be real with you. African-Americans becoming educated, smart, and intelligent, walking around, owning businesses, and being able to take over land. I mean, that's scary to them to have a person that's putting in place these programs and stuff. You know what I mean? And getting these investors involved and, and being able to take over properties and put things together in a proper and sensible, sensible way. Like, I just feel like it's, it's deeper than this, this some gang thing, gang, gang thing. You know what I mean? Like how they try to draw it out to be. Like I told you, a lot of times when you see these stories go down, they always try to make the narrative what they want to make it. So you will believe in it. But see, the thing is, you got YouTube, you got all these different platforms that's breaking down What's really happening? What's really going on? What is really the scenario with these situations? Because anybody with two eyes, anybody with, with, with all their senses and, and, and they can see this situation and for what it is, they know it's deeper than just a statement that all was put in play to be able to go with the idea of the reasoning for why he did it. But 
the whole thing is, it's all false. You know what I mean? From the guy on the roof, all these different things where we looking at these different camera views and different people breaking down these points and looking at these interviews over and over again where people are changing their statements. You know what I mean? And not just that, the cameras are giving away everything, all the evidence right in front of these people. So they can't go in these courtrooms and just say all this stuff that don't make sense. But like I say, even in the alley, they had a camera over there. You know what I'm saying? So seeing this guy run to the car, stuff like that. I just feel at this point in this whole case and this whole situation, it was foul play all the way, all the way down to the to the to the T. You know what I mean? From him being there to all this situation going off. And like I say before, I don't really know why is it that those only the three people that got hit in that small section. When he was aiming or whatever. You know what I mean? I just, I don't understand that. You know what I mean? But like I say, man, I don't know. Maybe he already peaked that. I, I don't know, man. That 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 rampart part is kind of weird to me still at this point. Because I don't understand how is it unless he got away that quick. Like I'm talking about he must have ran fast as heck. Like he must have been like soon as he seen a flash, just been gone. You know what I mean? But then again, it's like I, I don't know, man. That's a weird thing to me. You know what I mean, like I said, when we see the footage, we see him taking off. He like out of here. You know what I'm saying? But like I say, I know Cowboy was saying that he felt the energy that was shifting and he felt like something was going to happen like that. But my whole thing with Cowboy, I just feel like he just was making up everything he could possibly make up. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, like I said, he didn't even come out of the building. You know what I'm saying? He didn't come out of the building. He was in the building the whole time. The camera footage shows Cowboy in the building the whole entire time, like just in there. He never came out to his aid until everything was gone. The man was in the car left already. You know what I mean? He said he ran down and seen them and all of that. That was a lie. Like, how you ran out and seen them already? If they if all, all, come on, man. Like, this is it, this bull, man. You know what I mean, we see you in the glass. You talking about you was in tears and all this. That was all a lie, man. Like it was just all lies, a bunch of lies on top of lies, man. You know what I mean? And like I say, I think the frustration builds up within these stories that we keep hearing, and we realizing that. Come on, man. Like, 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 when are we gonna get to a point where we get the real story? You know what I mean? But like I say, it's so deep and indebted. That we focusing so much energy on these guys that we not realizing this is a bigger is bigger placements behind this move that just happened. And what 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 they doing is making you focus so much on the gang gang guys, the, the the smaller players, but not the actual bigger players. That's why we gotta always dig deep into these situations and really show you that it's not just them. You know what I'm saying? That's calling these shots or moving pieces around. You know what I mean? When you start talking millions of dollars and corporations and things of that nature, you got to understand it's so much more deeper than than what you can relate to. You know what I mean? It's, it's deeper. It's deeper than what these people are trying to make it out to be. You know what I mean? Like, when you sit back and you think about it and you see it and you see what he's doing and you're seeing all the things with the business partner and, and then you're seeing what the, what, what the guy's doing with the real estate and all of that, you starting to come back to your senses, man. Like, man, 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 man. So who getting this? Who getting that? I mean, who who coming to power on this side? And you start breaking it all down. And you start looking at the branches and you start to realize that. Okay. Okay. I see what's going on here. I see what's going on right here. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, we saying Cowboy was a dude that was sweeping the floors and mopping up the building and taking trash out and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, he walking around with a Bentley, you know I mean, swaths of money and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And then uh, Eric Holder, all of a sudden, get this big time lawyer. You know what I mean? And, 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 and like I said, we really haven't heard too much from Ron Paul like that. And then David Ross just kind of disappeared off the map. You know what I mean? Carrie Lintham came in for a second. He spoke his piece. You know what I mean? A lot of confusion with that. I mean, his people's end up getting mixed up with him. His picture online, they was having his, his, his I think his brother or some picture online, and it really was, you know what I mean, somebody else, you know what I mean? Both of them guys got hit up, though. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, man, um, unfortunate situation, but I always feel like it, it's always a deep and, and, and serious story behind it all, man. Like I say, when I listen to these statements and stuff like that, when the examiner come back and say, like, 11 shots and then like i'm like i'm like man and for the dude to come out and then finish the job off like that and like all the signals and stuff that you was getting on camera within the car like i'm just sitting there like bro 
at this point in the game, when we are watching the video over and over again, and we seeing all this stuff, and we seeing everything, you got to come to the conclusion and realize that this was a play put together by some very, very professional people, right? <laughs> Period. They used gang people to put together a, a, a scheme, you know what I mean, for the better good of themselves. And now they try, now what they doing is, they promise, bro, he going to get away with it for clean slate. You know what I mean? Because you got to think about, like Cowboy said, look, they really come around out there like that. You know what I'm saying? So to give an opportunity like that, you know what I mean, for this whole situation to go down like this is crazy, man. It's real, real crazy, man. It's serious out here. You know what I mean? Like, I just can't believe it, man. I just can't believe how they would do something so despicable and disgusting like this. You know what I mean? Like I say, People still got their, their antennas up on Cowboy. We getting his money from the Bentley. All these stories never adding up. I mean, immediately when Cowboy said his story, everybody went back and looked at the video of the actual situation and realized that Cowboy made up everything that came out of his mouth. You know, even the part about going in the burger joint. You know what I mean? Like I say, I feel like he knew more than what he's saying out of his lips. You know what I mean? Period, man. Now this period, man. And like I say, man, I don't know if if, if uh, uh, Eric Holder, you know what I'm saying, was scared of Rim Paul or what the case may have been, you know what I mean? But I'm trying to figure out how everybody got hit but Rim Paul, you know what I mean? That was weird to me, you know what I'm saying? Unless he was in fear or Rim Paul can run very, very, very fast, you know what I mean? But that was a weird, weird situation right there, you know what I mean? All the way, man, like like, like Spider Lowe said, man, this... Situations like this, man, we, we look at it, we, we read about it, we listen to all these statements and the stuff that's going down. But in reality, man, it's, it's, I always say it's always that, that, that person in that dark room, man. There's always so many layers to these type of situations, man. You know what I mean? Like I say, man, it's, a, it's so many pieces and parts to a lot of what you call distortion. You know what I mean? OGs trying to, you know what I mean, take over rank and stuff like that. And you got all these pop. Uh, people politicking, you know what I mean? Trying to just take over real estate. And it's just so much in indebted into that, you know what I mean? Especially in that place, you know what I mean? When you're talking Cali and L.A., that's one of the most vicious and dangerous places that people go to. And, and, and they realize that it's real out here, you know what I mean? It's real. These guys out here breathe this. It's, 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 it's what Chicago is today. It, I feel like Chicago... Probably be a little bit more aggressive at this point, but but L. A. was at an aggressive height at one point. It kind of a little bit calmed down, but not really. You know what I mean? But L. A. is is really wicked, man. You know what I mean, I heard D. L. Hughley, you know what I mean, on the Vlad joint, and he was talking about. It. He was like, man, Tupac, Big, you know what I mean, all the big legends, man, fell right there. You know what I'm saying? All of them, man, all the big time legends, man. Like I say, man. When you go to Cali, man, it's, it's, it's a different energy, man. It's, it's, it's definitely different, man. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say, man, I feel like if you're going to live out there or be out there, you got to play. It's, it's a politic thing. You know what I mean? It really is. And, and if your politics off, that means things can happen. You know what I mean? Like, And that's real rap. I'm being real with it. Your politics got to be on point in an environment like that. Them guys really don't go out there. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, from the oldest man. From one of the oldest mans in the clip, they don't go. You know what I mean? That's just real. You know what I mean? So when we see situations like this, man, we understand even the most business person with the tightest suit on got something within them. You know what I mean? So like I say, man, when we see this and we see Cowboy rolling around with Bentleys and wobs of money and he was sweeping the floors and you know what I mean, taking out the trash and stuff like that, it confused people in the audience because we're trying to figure out where's all this money coming from. You know what I'm saying? Then we see Eric Holder with lawyers and stuff like that. And everybody's on the cover-up thing. You know what I mean? So now what happens now? The business part and fading away from the from the scene because we see him with Tilp and Charlemagne and God and all these big-name rappers and stuff. And then all of a sudden, he just disappeared. He disappeared because a lot of the paperwork was fraudulent. You know what I mean? Everything. They, 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 them, them people in Cali put them on blast in front of everybody. We see bro doing documentaries and all of that. And then all of a sudden, bro, this just, just disappear. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, hold up, hold up, hold up. We just seen, and then we, then he got to explain this stuff. Could choke no joke, called him up himself. 
I said, what's going on, bro? What's, is this real? And bro said it was real. You know what I mean? So I'm like, oh, man, I don't know about this, man. Like I say, man, it's deeper than rap, man. It's just deep, man. I just feel like, man, when you look at the story and all the pieces within it, and then we seeing everybody fade away, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, what's going on with that? You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's weird. It's in the weird space. You know what I mean? I feel like they covering it up now at this point. You know what I mean? Year later, everybody's doing a cover up. Everybody ducking and dodging. You know what I'm saying? Trying to move out of the way of this. You know what I'm saying? By the grace, you know what I mean? Everybody trying to move out of the way of this situation, man. That's all it is. You know what I mean? It's just the cover up. You know what I mean? Everybody fading back. You don't see them doing interviews and none of that. Because they already know them questions going to come up. So, uh, Gross, um, can we ask you about this paperwork with Vegas and uh, what happened with you and my man Nip in Vegas? And also, what's going on with the property now? When, when they start asking them questions like that, he can't answer them. Why? Because he know what he's doing. He already know what he's doing. The American people know what he's doing. And it's despicable. It, it just is, man. You know what I mean? We didn't like the way it went down because it just it didn't look right. You know? And I think that's what's going on right there. I think I think where everybody looking at the paperwork and looking at all the stuff that's going on, they, they want him to answer the question is, why is it that you are left with all this stuff? Like, what is going on, man? I mean, what was your involvement in this situation, sir? We need to know the truth. We need to know answers from you. Can you tell us this? They, he's not going to go on interviews because they know they're going to blast them. Can you imagine them being on any interview show, Charlemagne or anybody, and they ask them these questions? I don't think Charlemagne going to do it because i seen Charlemagne getting in bed with him too. A lot of these guys getting in bed with this guy. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, man, it's a lot of dirty people doing dirty things in these communities, man. You know what I mean? We, 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 we all unvalue the truth about these situations, man. You know, like I said before, man, you could put the dude, let's just think about it, man. Everybody that's that's bosses and big time guys, they don't go out there and do this stuff themselves. They pay the money up. And then you might even see the real guy. You might he might send a guy to do a guy. It might be a third, fourth person involved in this situation. You know what I mean? But if you look at the scheme of everything, it was a lot of people involved on that scene. Come on now. Now, when we looked at these videos, we broke down these videos multiple times. We seen so many people involved. This in the parking lot alone, not even doing the getaway driver. Now, come on, man. Somebody with some bread was doing this. They put this together in the best way they possibly could. And they knew what they was doing from the beginning. They knew. This ain't no some, some coincidence type of thing. Who, who, what idiot would believe that this was a coincidence? This wasn't no coincidence. This wasn't no random thing. This was planned and put together. Period, man. Man, I'm just like, where do these people come from with keep talking about some that this was a random and emotional thing? Bro, Cowboy specifically said that they was outside having a conversation, chopping it up, talking about old times, and it was a good conversation. Even when Nip asked him about the paperwork, Bro still was in an okay mood to even bring his music up. And nobody knew what single he was talking about when he said he dropped the single. Nobody knew. Everybody's face was puzzled when they looked at him. When he said, did you hear my music? That's what Cowboy said. In the paperwork, they said that Eric walked up to Grandpa and gave him a handshake and took something from Grandpa. It was in the dockets. Now, like I say... In the camera, you see a lot of things moving and shaking in the video. That's what I'm saying. When they asked Cowboy, did he ever see the slowed down version of the whole situation? He said, absolutely not. He don't watch the videos. Now, I mean, either he lying or he's telling the truth. But the truth is, we see all these movements happening. They got it on camera in front of the telephone store, the burger spot, on the side where he came from the alley. It's a camera there. So my whole point is enough of the BS, man. That's all I'm saying. It's enough of this BS about this whole thing being some one guy doing something. And now, like I say, I don't know if this was music stuff or what. Cause Cowboys in the interview said, we ain't no big time music group or nothing like that. You don't have to be, buddy. It's the money that you accumulated. Even if you're doing independent things, man, and you taking over properties and stuff of this nature, you are stepping on somebody's feet. 
and they don't want you to be there. That's all it is. When you're stepping on somebody's feet, they can't eat like they want to eat. They say, I want to remove it. That's what they do. I mean, this is, we talking Cali now. You know what I mean? We're not in no suburban neighborhood. Even suburban neighborhoods, they get down crazy. You understand what I'm saying? When their mentality is not all the way clear. You know what I mean? So like when I, when I do this story and I break this down to people, I try to get into, into their soul to understand that once you get into power, once you start getting money. Now, I know you love your hood. I know you love to be around. I know this. Have security, dog. I know they're all on the rap videos, man. Oh, you got to go to your hood with security, man. Yes, if you are building and doing all these different creative things, you have to, bro, because you got to understand it's so many powers beyond everything. And then what you got to understand, everybody trying to make some money. So when you get a dude a couple of dollars, he going to do a sting just because you get him a couple of dollars. How many dudes you know right now? If you rich and you got money and you get on, oh, I got 10 bands for you. Go take care of that. Man, that dude going to jump off that couch so quick. 10 bands? Man, I did that yesterday, homie. What you, what you talking about? You got 10 bands for me. I got you. Now, the money that they offer, Eric, do you know how much money they offer them? You talking about a dude that's on the street that do this for a living, they probably ain't even getting paid for it all the time. And they say, what? We're going to give you this much money right here. Go take care of that, buck. And we're going to make sure you get your good lawyer, and we're going to make sure you good. You know what I mean? That man, look, think about it, man. That man high as heck going up there. Even Cowboys say the man was lit. He was already out of his, out of his noodle. He was how he walked up there. He wasn't even in his right mind. The driver wasn't telling the true story, bro. Wasn't telling the true story. What happened to Cap? What happened to Eric before he even got the nip? He was getting into some altercations, man. The dude was flipping out, cuz. This is y'all gotta pay attention to all the stories that's coming out, all the articles that's coming out, and understand that this was deeper than that, man. That's real rap, man. Like we can't we can't sugarcoat this this no more, man. This ain't no more sugarcoating, man. Tell the business part, come on out and do an interview and let the people know what's really going on. We ain't heard from him since then. You know what I mean? Let people come to the stage. You know what I mean? Can we get Cowboy on a real platform like Vlad TV or somewhere where we know Vlad is the police and we know Vlad gonna get him to answer the real questions? Put him on Vlad. We know what Vlad is, man. Vlad was a low-key officer, man. He would get this guy to talk, man. You know what I mean? For real, man. Because these stories is fake. Now, this is real, man. I'm just, I'm being honest with you, man. You know what I mean? Get David Gross and get him to go right on. I think, matter of fact, I think um, Eric Holder was trying to do an interview with Vlad, though. You know what I'm saying? He was trying to get up there. But like I say, you know, I just feel like this whole thing is a sickening, sick, twisted re reality of, of what people would do, you know what I mean, for a couple of dollars. You gotta understand, it's a bigger, this is, it's levels to it, you know what I mean? You send a dude that ain't got nothing to go do something that he do on a regular. He go bang, bang on a regular. Oh, I'm gonna give you 10 grand or give you, you know what I mean, 55,000 or whatever. Nigga, like, what? I'm off the couch already, bro. I'm locked and loaded, dog. That's what they saying out there, bro. So I'm telling you, go around any LA dude right now in the street, dog. He banging. And I ain't talking about on nip, I'm just talking about on regular, dog. You know what I'm saying? We know. We know what type of mentality that is, dog. Niggas in the hood. What hood you know? You get a dude that type of money and he ain't gonna move. Now I ain't saying they gonna move on nip. I'm just saying move on any other dude that they get paid to go do. They would have done it. That's real talk. And as a higher person putting in the bread or whatever to make these moves happen. That's just point blank period. Now anybody with sense would know what I'm talking about is real, dog. You talking about jump off the couch. These dudes ain't making no money. They ain't making that type of money like that on the on this one job. You know what I'm saying? But like I say, man, the dude Cowboy even said the man came up lock and loaded, man. His brain, he wasn't even dead when he was in there. He was already out of his noodle already. He ran this play that he was paid to do. You know what I mean? He even said it in the article that he was paid to do this. If he was on Vlad, he was gonna tell Vlad everything. Vlad de declined the interview. He declined it. Vlad declined the interview. I guarantee he was going to expose everything that was going on. They didn't want him to do that. I think they probably, somebody that probably came to Vlad was like, no, don't do it, Vlad. There's bigger powers involved, Vlad. Don't do it, Vlad. There's bigger powers involved, Vlad. Don't do it to yourself. I'm out.
Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to this show, man. It's going to be an amazing one today, man. I need everybody to subscribe to the channel right now. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and also hit that share button, man. I thank all of y'all for joining in with me today. Like I said, this show is going to be just for you. It's going to be a lot of information on this show right here. You dig what I'm saying? I'm going to bring it to you. I'm going to let you get in the comment session and have a conversation with me. Talk to me. You dig what I'm saying? Everybody's been hitting me up about this. I didn't really want to touch on it, but like I say, I'm going to speak on it because I got a lot of information on this situation. You know what I mean? But bear with me on this one. You dig? Hey, look, everybody and their wife got the books out right now. They're in the description box. I would love y'all support. They write on Amazon. Come and purchase you one. And also, if you want an autograph copy, we do all of that for me. Just hit me up in the um, description and talk to me. I mean, in the comment section, I meant, and um, have a conversation where we can work that out. You know what I mean? And uh, also, man, uh, this is my new YouTube channel, and it's, I'm going to start posting it. I'm going to do another video about this same topic right here. You know what I mean? This whole Nipsey Hustle situation. We're going to do another one tomorrow, so don't miss out on that. You know what I mean? I'm going to inform you, bring some information to you that you probably never heard before. You know what I mean? And we're going to have conversations in the comment section. I want y'all to talk to me. And like I say, I, I see all y'all comments. Don't think I don't see it or this or that. You know what I mean? I see all everybody's comments. You dig what I'm saying? And we, like I said before, we're going to have a conversation and we're going to dive deep into this, this uh, amazing conversation. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, though. Love y'all, man. But let's get into it, man. Everybody's been hitting me up about Big U. Big U this, Big U that, Big U this. Have you, have you heard about Big U working with the LAPD? Have y'all know that Big U was working with the police and this and that? And Big U ain't it. He, he ain't as, uh, as scary in LA as he is in other places and things of that nature. I've been hearing it all the noise, man. Like I say, um, I personally don't have a problem with Big U. You know what I mean? I don't have nothing against the guy. You know what I mean? But like I say, I'm going to bring the facts and what people have been uh, uh, saying within the L.A. culture. You know what I mean? I, I've been seeing a lot of people coming out about Big U and they feeling like that he had an involvement in this situation because of Eric Holder being in his, uh, I think it's his niece or some house or whatever, Tanisha or whatever. And um, I showed pictures of that. You know what I mean? I, I remember this was a big, big, big story. And a lot of people was like, that was fishy that... Uh, that Eric Holder was having a relationship with Lipsy Hustle's uh, baby mother, you know what I mean? Like in the house, like relationship that tight, that close, and that this man would take an initiative to kill and hurt Nipsey Hustle in this type of way, in a vicious, nasty, and brutal way like he did with a, with 11 gunshots, you know what I mean? They said it could have been 10, but 11, you know what I mean? Holes in Nipsey Hustle, you know what I mean? And, and trying to, he even shot him in the head, you know what I mean? It was a fatality. And I think what a lot of people have been seeing and coming back to is the fact that Tanisha says she was the last person that talked to him on the phone, you know what I'm saying? And um, it read, it, it made a lot of red flags go off. And then I think Big U name got thrown in the midst because of the relationship that is his family or whatever, you know what I mean? So like I say, I feel like a lot of people felt that Nipsey Hussle, this, this this the thing that I've been getting from everybody, you know what I'm saying? Like I say, um, I'm speaking from the information that I've been receiving from people and people have been talking to me about the Big U relationship and um, and a lot of people have been feeling like Big U has been doing a little bit, a lot of things with the police and the LAPD and things of that nature and they feel like Big U is, should be a suspect on the list, you know what I mean? A lot of people have... I mean, their points about it. I'm not going to say if it's valid or not. I'm just going to say they have their points about Big U. You know what I mean? And they've been spurring it all over the internet. You know what I mean? Like I said, I never had an issue with the guy. You know what I'm saying? Respect was respect due. But like I said, there's a lot of people that's coming for his neck right now. You know what I mean? I've been seeing people come on here and say that Big U was locked down in the jail and he wasn't the tough guy that everybody think he is. You know what I'm saying? And he was getting beat up and things of that nature. And this is all the stuff that's been rumored all over the internet. Like I said, I wasn't in jail with the young um, with, with Big U, but this is what's going on on the internet. They almost trying to say like, for instance, everybody got that story about Suge Knight getting knocked out by Akon Peoples or whatever, and then Suge Knight press charges is almost a case like that with Big U. You know what I mean? Like I say, I seen multiple interviews with Big U. With Big U was talking that big big boy status type of thing, where if he was home, it wouldn't have been no death row. You know what I mean? So 
not to get too much off track, I'm just giving y'all what I've seen of big use. Like I said, I don't know. A lot of people have been attacking them since day one of this situation happening. And once again, Big U was not at the funeral. You know what I'm saying? And I, when I found out about that, I, I I didn't know if it was fishy or was it because of the situation that happened between Nip and Black Sound. You know what I'm saying? And you got to think about Nip is not there to mend things. You know what I mean? If it was anything to me. But like I said, uh, Big U was saying that him and Nip was having a relationship and him and his uh, kids and things of that nature was uh, having good relationships with Nip. So, like I say, I, you got the internet people and people from L.A. that speak in their piece on what they feel about uh, Big U. You know what I mean? And then you have um, all the allegations that's going against Big U as far as, like, not showing up to the funeral, not paying his respect and stuff like that. People felt like that was a violation. You know what I mean? And, and everybody knows that... Um, that when Nip was coming up, Big U was supposed to have been managed or having his career in his hand. You know what I mean? They end up separating and stuff like that. And then became a big fight. They say that all uh, Black Sound ended up busting shots at you or whatever. You know say so It got real out there in the streets. You know what I mean? I feel like uh, people ain't never look at Big U in that type of way again. You know what I mean? He kind of lost his respect from that because of what Black Sound did or whatever. You know what I mean? But like I say, man... um. When you dive deep into this situation, a lot of people are just pointing the fingers. They've been pointing the fingers at Big U. You know what I mean? I'm going to tell you why. I mean, you got Kerry Lingtham. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people feel like Kerry Lingtham and that whole situation was connected to Big U. And I mean, my, my point of view of it, I just thought it was like a situation where a guy came home from jail. You know what I mean? And uh, a Big U probably hit Nip up and say, yeah, we, we need him some clothes. But then we found out it was nothing about the clothes. So then, like I say, once again, I go into a confusing space because I'm lost at that point. You know what I mean? Because like I say, man, when you listen to Cowboy's story, he tells you that uh, uh, Nipsey Hussle come up. You see Ryan Paul or whatever. You know what I mean? And um, he gets out of the car. He said he hasn't seen Ryan Paul in a while. So I guess they didn't have a relationship like that. I think people even questioning the uh, Ryan Paul at this, pe this period of time. You know what I'm saying? Trying to figure out. Why is it that everybody got hit up but him? And why is it saying like when he Nip got out of the car that everything was fishy from that standpoint right there? I mean, like I say, Cowboy, uh, Big U, and uh, Round Paul all been been questioned by not not the officers but people within the media force because they feel like it was a lot of things that was done that didn't make sense. You know what I mean? So like I said, when I look back on the whole story, the Tanisha thing, and when we finally seen Tanisha. Uh, we finally seen Tanisha, uh, a picture of Tanisha with Eric Holder inside the home. I think that really messed everybody up at that period of time. You know what I mean? And I think it really gave everybody a bad taste in their mouth. And like I said, I didn't hear so many stories, man, allegedly things that's been going on within a YouTube and different social places where people are getting paid to create stories. Like they was creating stories about Lord London that was false and fake and trying to make Tanisha look like this guy. And then people that understood what these people was getting paid to do. So they began to bring Tanisha paper, uh, paperwork and bring her lies when she was high and drunk and messed up and put it all over the internet. Like I told people before, we're in an era now where you can't hide information. You cannot tell us what you want us to think or nothing like that. We have YouTube and different platforms where people are breaking down the information and allowing you to see what's the truth. Like it, like I told y'all before, it was a... um. In the uh, Black Lives Matter rally up with George Floyd, they had a white guy out there, and I think he had a born arrow or something like that, and he tried to hurt somebody in the crowd or whatever, the protesters, and he was, and somebody came up, hit him with a skateboard, they beat him up really bad and took the thing out of his hand, and he got on the news thing and said, oh, all I said was all lives matter, and they beat me up, and then they showed a clip, everybody on YouTube blasted him, showed a clip of him with the born arrow trying to hurt somebody. So like I say, it's like, with the Nipsey Hustle thing and the Big U stuff like that, there's a lot of people that's behind the scene that's creating these narratives and stuff like that, being paid to throw things off into different directions. Like the Laura London thing, I feel like they was really out of pocket with that. I seen a lot of people doing that. And I didn't understand the concept of why they was doing it. All I felt is that somebody was being paid off. And then, like I said once before, it was a lot of people doing fraudulent things. That's why Tanisha, Big U, and all of them was questioned because they was pulling out foundations for Nipsey Hustle. We all seen the GoFundMe thing with uh. Tanisha doing it, collecting money for Nipsey Hussle when she have no relationship with the family like that. You know what I mean? I think that was a foul thing that her father, I think her father was doing something like that. You know what I mean? That came out to the public. And like I say, 
when people look at this story and they start to see what's going on, they look at Big U all the way because what, what, what people realize is that Nipsey Hussle was beginning to step into his glory. Now, we've been hearing Nipsey Hussle put out mixtapes. He had the $100 mixtape. Jay-Z bought like five of them or something like that. You know what I mean? A lot of people was buying it and everybody thought he was crazy when he came up with the idea. If I'm not mistaken, I think he got it from some type of story in Philly or something like that. I mean, but like I say, he was just manifesting his goals and his dreams right before our eyes. And we got an opportunity to see his creativity. And I think everybody was blown away that he was able to be an entrepreneur and a, and a person that was willing to step out of the box. And I think when you think of Big U and you think of the Nipsey Hussle situation, I think the jealousy came in and people was replaying a lot of the videos that Nipsey was talking about, these OGs hating on me and jealous and stuff like that. And I think a lot of people went straight to Big U. You know what I mean? They felt like Big U maybe had a little grudge on his, on his mind or a little thing on his mind because that <clears throat> Nipsey Hussle was moving into a bigger situation. You know what I mean? Being that people was able to see him more. He was doing more videos. His, his album was nominated for a Grammy. You know what I mean? He was he, he was doing things. You know what I mean? And he was building things within the community. And he was a lot bigger and a lot powerful than a lot of these guys out here, the big U's and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I think people just went straight at you and was like, nah, I feel like you had a lot to do with this, you know what I mean? Or with jealousy and hatred, you know what I mean? But like I always tell people, man, you got to be careful who you let in your circle. You got to be careful who you let around you. Like I said, I can't um, say you name and confirm that if he was actually involved. I just see a lot of people on the internet going at his neck right now saying he ain't the tough guy that he out, out here portraying to be. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people been coming at his neck about that, how he was being bullied and jailed and stuff like that. He wasn't all this tough guy he, he trying to portray. You know what I mean? Like I said, I wasn't in jail with him. It's just the internet. They, they coming out with these stories and they, they trying to put him on blast. You know what I'm saying? Basically. You know what I mean? They questioning his gangster. You know what I mean? Even though I heard uh, yuck mouth, you know what I'm saying? He didn't call you up for protection, but yuck mouth scared to even stuck foot in LA after we did the game and all that disrespect he was doing with that. But anyway, not to get too much off track, you know what I mean? But like I say, man, um, a lot of people have been questioning Big U, and they was in my comment section getting mad at me. Like I told y'all, man, listen, man, I'm reading all y'all comments, and like I say, man, um, I can't get on the platform and say that Big U did this or Tanisha did that. All I can tell you is that. There's a lot of people questioning they're, they're questioning a lot of things about their character and relationship that they have with the LAPD and stuff like that. Because like I say in LA, the LAPD is not trusted, you know what I mean? And they do work with a lot of game bangers out there to bring corrupts within the city. You know what I mean? This is what allegedly, I'm just say allegedly, you know what I mean? But uh a lot of people have been saying this, like this going over it, man, just trying to tear down nip at this point. You know what I mean? Like I I say, man. Jealousy would make a person do the most awfulest and most illest thing impossible. And I remember Big U was explaining, man, if somebody want to get you, it don't matter if it's camera there or what's there, your man's on on site. You know what I mean? I feel like a lot of people felt that what Black Sound did, which was probably, it was a couple of years ago when people were releasing the story talking about Black Sound and got at Big U. You know what I mean? It was like he was bitching Big U up. You know what I mean? Shot at him, got Big U, you know what I mean? Ducking for cover type of thing. You know what I mean? But like I said, man, I wasn't there, so I don't know if that was real or that was a situation that was factual. You know what I mean? But like I say, a lot of people were saying Black Sam put that pressure on him for messing with his brother or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And like I said before, man, people feel like Big U just got a lot of jealousy in his heart. He working with the LAPD. He working with the police. You know what I mean? Like I say, I... I like I said, I can't confirm these things, but the, the internet is going crazy on you right now. You know what I mean? Just calling him a jealous a jealous dude, you know what I mean? Out here, you know what I'm saying? Trying to act like he 100% was with Nip and he really ain't had a relationship like that. You know what I mean? He say he, a lot of people feel like he been faking the funk, you know what I mean? And now we got Cowboy out here, you know what I mean? Capping, you know what I mean? Talking about that. Everything Cowboy said was some bull, you know what I mean? That's a factual thing because we seen it on camera. Now, Big U, we didn't even see Big U on the site. You know what I mean? But Big U name keep coming up, you know what I'm saying? Because of Tanisha and Eric Holder being in the house, you know what I'm saying? And when you listen to the driver's story, you can basically see that 
this whole thing was, was pre-organized before it actually happened, before the attack happened. This wasn't nothing about no damn ratting or nothing like that because Cowboy said it himself. They had a conversation about the paperwork, but it wasn't nothing aggressive, and they were talking reasonable. But Cowboy also said that he felt uncomfortable, and he was trying to get Nipsey Hussle inside the store. Now, Cowboy had told so many lies. He even said he went into the burger spot, and he didn't. He was angry. And angry that went into the burger spot and got his food. So, like I said, Cowboy wasn't telling a lot of lies, and we know Lincoln told a lot, a lot, a lot of lies, you know what I mean, and Lincoln was connected directly to Big U, you know what I mean, and I think that's what got everybody thrown off was that connection, and that's probably why Cowboy, I mean, um, yeah, Cowboy, I think, uh, was saying that, um, Big U, um, um, when Kerry Lincoln was there, uh, they said that Eric Holder kind of backed off on Kerry Lincoln, you know what I'm saying, like a fear-based thing, you know what I mean, but like I say, man, um, a lot of these things that put people in a place where they was like, wow. I mean, Big U, Big U, Big U, Big U. Big U name was blasting all over the internet, just like Cowboys. You know what I mean? I think a lot of YouTubers and people was afraid to say his name because, you know what I mean, they know what was the consequences with playing with Big U. But the guys in L.A. came out and said, this guy ain't that big, tough guy that everybody think he is. You know what I'm saying? He ain't the guy like that. You know what I mean? He, you know what I mean? People saying he faking the funk like me. I don't have no reason to disrespect his name or anything like that. I just bring you what the people are saying. I'm just a damn blogger. You know what I mean? I blog what the people are saying within the media and all on the YouTube platforms. And I just look up the information. And like I said, they've been running his name in the, in the dirt. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know him personally. But if we had a conversation, we would chop it up and try to figure out what the hell is, is these people on the internet talking about. Is this real? Is it fictional? Is it fake? You know what I mean? Like I say, man, um, they've really been going crazy on Big U. Right now, talking about he got a relationship with the LAPD and stuff like that. And people know in L.A., that's the, that's something that you don't say about a gang banger or official gang bangers in any type of way. It's a very disrespectful thing to say that they got relationship with police officers and things of that nature. Like I say, I'm getting all this information off the Internet and I'm bringing it back to you. You know what I'm saying? The people wanted me to elaborate on it and try to break down why the people coming to this conclusion around these internet sources and stuff that they feel like big you had played a part in this scandal and this this this, this whole uh, debacle of, of nipsey hustle you know what i mean like i feel like um it's a nasty world out here man it's it's it's, it's, it's not that hard to understand that in the world that we live in and the place that we live in Jealousy is a very, very, very strong and powerful thing within the coach, especially when you're in places, a private situation where there's a lot of people that don't have nice and wonderful things. That's why I always try to coach our and coach the people that listen to me to understand that once you elevate to a different level, you have to get away from the communities like this because people are not having the same celebrations and happiness that you are having. But like I say, sometimes we can be so indebted into the love of the community that we get that we forget is also hate within that love and and people don't understand how to love something that's better than them you know what i mean at that moment in time not to say that god won't give you the glory to be just as great or just as good but sometimes people don't know how to put in the effort and the work and have the dedication to be within god you know what i mean to listen to allah to be able to understand the spirits and the angels you know what I mean? So like I said before, man, people basing their the information of jealousy when they're saying big you. And then they also feel that Eric Holder being paid off and things of this nature, they feel like the combination of you with the LAPD and them running a play scheming for the real estate property and things of that nature. People saying big you had a, a hand in the, in the mix of it. You know what I mean? Because they feel like Big U was always trying to uh, manipulate and take advantage of Nipsey Hussle. And that's when Black Sand had to bust a shot in his ass. That's what they were saying all over social media. Like I said before, man, I, I don't really know what really happened with the uh, Black Sam and Big U thing. But we do know Big U was not at the... Um, he was not at the funeral, you know what I'm saying? When everybody was there from the Meek Mills, the Farrakhan's, the Snoop Dogg, you know what I mean, the YG's. You know I mean, I could, could name, et cetera, et cetera. They was all there, but Big U wasn't there. You know what I mean? People questioned why was Big U not in the presence, you know what I mean, with Nipsey Hussle. Now, we know he with WAC 100, and he's supporting WAC 100%. And WAC been very, 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 very opinionated about Nipsey Hussle in a very, very strong way. So I, I, I get kind of confused and within that mixture, too, because I feel like 
Wax say a lot of things that a lot of the 60 members that's close to Nip don't respect. But yet, Big U is a money whack 100. And I think Big U is one of whack 100 protectors, you know what I mean, that's holding them down within the city. So I, I just feel like that conflict alone brings suspicion within the camp and the people within the L.A. culture. See, the people in the L.A. culture know it a lot better than us Virginia cats from Norfolk, VA. You know what I mean? Like I say, this whole scenario, this whole situation is... It's unbelievable to me, you know what I mean? Like I say, it's a big scandal. It's a lot of plays that's being made. And I feel like Nip, as cool and as smooth as Nip was, he created enemies and didn't even know it just all being great. You know what I mean? That's why I tell people, man, you could just go for me thing, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I, I just think it was a foul thing for that, you know what I mean? But not to get too much into that. Um, I just feel like, listen to me, man. I, I, I always try to tell people, because I know one day you... I'm talking directly to you. You're going to be great and you're going to make a lot of money, right? And you may be in the, um, maybe let's say you middle class. You may be in the hood, right? Okay. I'm talking to the people that's in those hood environments and they know what type of environment and gang banging things that go around in the hood, right? I'm talking to you. You're going you're gonna to be great. You're going to be amazing rapper. Whatever you're doing right now, you're going to be great at it, right? So listen to me, right? This just this, 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 this walk with me, right? Now, all of a sudden you get a deal or all you go independent and you get a lot of money or whatever and you and you walking around half a million dollar jewelry on you got any car you desire your kids look good if you don't got kids you just look good you know what i mean but i know you got friends that people love you they care about you but amongst every friend is the enemy and i hate to say that i know people say man that's wrong man it ain't real yes it is man people in general with society and how TV programming have been messing up people's feelings and emotion because we don't meditate no more. We don't pray to God no more. We don't do anything no more. All we do watch social media, watch TV, love and hip hop, all this drama stuff. And all we know how to do is have sex with each other girls, have sex with each other men. That's what uh, some of the girls do. They, everybody having sex with everybody. You know what I mean? And everybody's just taking advantage of everybody. And then the jealousy is, is overwhelming. You know what I mean? Like where everybody's hating on the next person because they have a little success. And then they, they made it out. They was able to do something great with their life. You know what I mean? Like So when I say all of this, I'm saying like when you look at Dipsy Hustle, right? You look at a person that was beginning to take off. Grammys and Jay, all of this stuff is moving in a positive direction. And people that's looking at Nip is starting to escape the box and becoming something different. Because Nip was always under the Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg cover. Because when he, when he rapped, he sounded like Snoop. When he talked in interviews, he sounded like Snoop. He even resembled Snoop Dogg. You know what I mean? He was like the second of Snoop Dogg. You know what I mean? Then... The year he got nominated for the Grammy is when he came into himself because he didn't sound like Snoop no more. He didn't do interviews and sound like Snoop no more. He sounded like Nipsey Hussle. He was becoming a whole man, whole person and everything. And he was developing in something different. And that's just factual. That's just real. We just keeping a butt. We keeping it 100. You know what I mean? So when I sit back and I look at all these stories and I look at this stuff, I come back to tell the communities and people around women, men, whoever listening to the channel. Is that when you get to your success or you get to your plateau, sometimes it's nothing wrong with visiting your people. Nothing wrong. Don't get it. Don't get it messed up. It's nothing wrong. But we got to understand we have to have protection. Oh, you weak if you got security and this and that. But you're not weak when you're dead. Like when you're no longer here, nobody can bring you back to life. It's like the story of Humpty Dumpty. You know what I mean? When he fall off the wall, you know what I'm saying? You can't put the egg back together. You know what I mean? What you going to tape it up? The yolk still going to be pouring out of it. You know, like, come on, man. Like, we, we got to come to our our senses and realize that, yeah, I, listen to me, man. I'm going to be real. I'm going to keep it a buck. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. You know what I'm saying? And we ain't going to go all the way off track. I'm, I'm going to just keep it real with you. If I win a million dollars or a lottery, whatever, let's say I just get a deal, $100 million or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Is I'm going to be walking around the hood? Hell no. Like, I'm not walking around the hood. I want to go see Africa. I want to go to Paris. I want to go to everywhere I ain't never been before. And I want to live there. I want to experience everything that I've never experienced before. How can you live in the hood your whole entire life and want to go back to the hood? You know what I mean? That's why I'm trying to say we got to elevate ourselves. And we got to understand that it's more to life than living around poverty and, and living around people that's doing negative and bad things within the community. It's elevation time. You know what I mean? Like I said, there's nothing wrong with visiting family and stuff like that. But I understand the jealousy is what's the problem. Like... This is what I be trying to get people to understand with this thing, right? Nipsey Hustle and stuff like that, success and building up in the community and stuff like that. You got to understand, you went to school with somebody, right? 
And those people work their ass off and they don't got nothing. They could barely pay their rent. They could barely pay their car note. They could barely put clothes on their, their kids' back. You know, I mean? they're looking at you and you got everything. And they jealous. They may sit there and say, man, I'm happy you made it. But deep down in their heart, they're not. You know, Big U lost Nipsey Hussle and he began to make millions and millions of dollars. He become very, very successful. You know what I mean? Is he jealous? A lot of people feel that he was jealous. A lot of people feel like he lost the GOAT. You know what I mean? And, and realize that how big of a person, how big of a superstar that Nip was. You know, like I said, once again, Wack 100, who is rolling with Big U, is saying a lot of things that's questionable. You know what I mean? Big uh, um, Nipsey Hussle's not a legend and all the things that Wack been saying about Nipsey Hussle is why people are questioning Big U. Because they're like, why is Big U not really addressing the stuff Wack 100 is doing? Because he's doing a lot of despicable things within the Nipsey Hussle thing. And then I know he tried to clear it up with Nick Cannon and stuff like that in different interview shows. But once again, when you're looking at the 60 game bangers, they're not having Then the game do the thing with the prolific thing. Once again, all these things is seeming like disrespect to the 60s. You know what I mean? The game bangers that really was close to Nipsey and really had love to him. And WAC 100 is close to all of these people and also Big U. And I think these combinations and with seeing that picture of Eric Holder within his family member house, which is uh, Nipsey Hussle's baby mother, is so suspicious, so random, so weird. And then she get on the internet on a live video and say that, she had her last conversation with Nip before it all went down. You know what I mean? And then that went to a spectacle uh, standpoint. You know what I mean? So what time that he was on the she he was on the phone? That you know what I'm saying? Did Cowboy miss within the court dockets and stuff like that? And I think what they're gonna end up doing is going back to the video camera, going back because like I say, Tanisha haven't really been brought up on these cases and charges yet. You know what I mean? Like I said, they, I feel like they're gonna go down the list. You know what I mean? Like I say before, this everything that's been going on within the world right now has been slowing up a lot of stuff. Even the pop smoke situation got slowed up. You know what I mean? But like I say, man, I tell people, man, LA ain't the place to play around with. You know what I mean? I I know you love it. It's your hood and stuff like that. I'm gonna tell you, man. I had a guy. I was working with, man, he was from L.A. He had moved from out of town. He said he couldn't do it no more. You know what I mean, he said, you, wrong, you go through the wrong neighborhood just for having colors on and you and you got to damn near have a fist fight. And he, he was doing security with me or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So like, like I said before, man, um, the culture in L.A. ain't changed. The culture in Chicago ain't changed. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's hard with people out there in those environments that's going through stuff. And that's why I always say when I see, I love the fact that I see people like Chicago natives like uh. Kane Vaughn go back and get back to his community and stuff like that and get back to his homies. I love it. My only problem with King Vaughn is like, be careful. You know what I mean? Because you, amongst everybody out there, you got to make for sure you don't got nobody hating on you that's within your circle. You know what I mean? Because all it takes is one slip, and sh slip up and you have an FBG duck situation. You know what I mean? At a, a prime place in the city where we know there's no crime really yet. You know, I'm pretty sure it's cops all out there now. You know what I mean? Just post it. Just to be sitting out there doing patrol all, all of a sudden because of that. Because all of the media that's going to be coming over that. You know what I mean? But like I say, man, I think this is the reason why a lot of people feel the way they feel about the Black Lives Matter. Because they didn't see people marching in the streets of Chicago when FBG Duck got shot. But when police do stuff, they come out and do it. You know what I mean? Like I say, that's that's here. That's, that, that's, that, 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 all of this play into what I'm talking about, man. You know what I mean? As far as jealousy, envy within the city. And just all of it, man. That's why you think, think about it. Master P had to leave uh, New Orleans, right? And he was saying it was racist. A lot of racist people out there. They got his brother, though. They was able to get his brother because his brother was so indebted into the people within the street life out there. You know what I mean? I think it was the Kaleo Projects or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. And like I feel, when I look at C Murder and I look at this story, it shows y'all what I'm trying to teach y'all. Every day I get on my platform, I try to tell y'all, young brothers, older brothers, anybody that's willing to listen to my words and, and listen to what I'm trying to say. It's nothing wrong with loving your neighborhood. It's nothing wrong with loving your family. It's nothing wrong with loving your, the people out there. We have to understand once we elevate to another level, we have to begin to build in our character up. And like I say, the people around have to be changing themselves. You can't continue to hang around people that's doing the same thing, acting the same way, because you're going to get trapped and you're going to be in situations like C-Murder where you're doing life in the penitentiary. You know what I mean? For a crime you didn't even do just by allowing yourself to be connected to the wrong individual. Bobby Smurder, same thing. Got all 100 niggas on tour and shit with him. And these niggas out here running reckless, uh, all type of drug charges and all type of stuff like that. Now when he get out of jail, he need to be by him damn self, probably one or two people, no, no more than four or five, 
and make sure they ain't on that dumb shit. You know what I mean? Because you're not trying to keep losing your career to niggas that ain't got no career. You know what I mean? That's why I keep saying it, bro. That's what that's my whole point of this whole situation, man. I just feel like, man, when I look at the Nipsey Hussle thing, I just feel like it was a lot of jealousy. It was a lot of envy. And it was a lot of people that was trying to get rewards. You know what I mean? Try to take something. Because at the end of the day, we're looking at who is getting all the money, who is receiving all of that. And I think that was what you were saying in his defense. It's like, I don't have anything with, uh, with Nipsey Hussle. I don't get any money with Nip. I don't have nothing with Nipsey. And that's what Big U was using as his defense. But a lot of people still wasn't buying it with him saying it. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, David Ross got everything. I'm talking about properties, all type of things. It's all in his name. It's all going to him. You know what I mean? Like I said before, they were saying the family was having a little uh, stuff with the estate. You know what I mean? A lot of stuff was going on with that. You know what I mean? With the properties and stuff like that. But like I said, it's a sad story, man. That's why I... I when it was all going down and we were seeing the videos of Tanisha with Eric Holder and we seen her high on camera, drunk and just out of control. Everybody was like, she need to go back to Tanisha. I'm like, ah, I don't know about that. That don't look good. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I would rather the child go with somebody that actually love her and care about her. Then we see another video of Nipsey daughter saying she can't even get in the house. And I was like, that was sad. It almost brought tears to my eyes. It's like, wow, she couldn't get in the house. They locked her out of the house and stuff. And they post the video up. You know what I mean? This video was out a while ago. And, I, and I'm like, wow. I, I, I just understand what was going on with that. You know what I mean? It was very disturbing and very not cool. You know what I mean? And I, and I know if Nipsey was here right now, he would have been slapping the dog shit out of a lot of motherfuckers, man, for playing. I know you don't play with niggas' daughters and shit like that. It's just a very disrespectful type of thing. You know what I mean? I don't know why she was locked out of the house or was somebody messing with somebody or what the case may have been with that. You know what I mean? But like I said before, man, to prevent things like this from happening, we got to begin to relocate and go into better places. I know a lot of people say, yeah, Pop Smoke was in a suburban neighborhood and things like that, and he still got home invaded. You know what I mean? Like I say, man, if it's your time, sometimes it's your time. But like I say, I, I believe a lot of times it wasn't the person's time. It was just the fact that his location got leaked into, to everybody. You know what I'm saying? And they did a play. But once again, it go back to what I was trying to say about security. And I, I know everybody hates 6 9 and He's a rat. He's a snitch, everything. But he's right about the one thing. You need to have security at all times. You know what I mean? To keep yourself safe. You know what I mean? You just can't just be... You think Floyd May... You think somebody going to actually come to Floyd Mayweather house? This man got top security 24 hours. You got to be like that. And you got to have dudes that's really on their job and they're doing their thing. They saying that... Uh, they saying that... Uh, or uh, Takashi security is like a million dollars, man. I'm like, dang, that's a lot of money for security. But like I say, you better to have it than not to have it and then be on with your head and your top blowed off. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, man, this is a cold world out here. And these people out here are grimy and dirty. They don't give a damn. Like the way they did nip with 11 shots, you know what I mean? That was, uh, that was fucking disgusting it was disturbing it was every word that 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 means just unright you know what i mean and i feel like this dude to actually go in the courtroom and say that i'm not guilty i just feel like everybody in the fucking stand should have slapped the shit out of him you know what i mean but like i said before man um this case is man it's heartbreaking to everybody you know what i'm saying i've been seeing dave east and meat mill some of the people that was real close with him in the game from there dog uh Rick Ross, all the big names, I mean, just showing Nip love, you know what I mean, and giving him respect, you know what I mean, because it's, it's, it's not easy, man, it's not, it's definitely not an easy thing to deal with something just tragic and crazy, even Lil Wayne's son came up and showed love to Nip, you know what I mean, and that was respected, man, to be able to go out in the, um, in the Staples Center, you know what I mean, you know you legendary, man, to have the president write you a letter, you know what I mean? Like I say, man, Nip had so many great qualities about himself and who he was, you know what I mean? And I feel like people didn't want to see his glow. You know, and that's like I said, tell y'all right now, you right now that's listening, you're going to be great. You're going to be amazing. You're going to have everything you ever dreamed for. But the thing is, you got to be willing to let go of the past, especially if it's toxic and it's, and it's, and it's a black hole and you know you ain't going nowhere within that hole. I mean, sometimes we got to change our friends. Sometimes we got to change placement and life to be able to live a better and comfortable life for our friends and family and for the be on this earth. Now, like I say, you could get sickness and anything can happen to you. But the thing is, we got to learn how to 
distance ourselves away from that environment and be able to be able to be comfortable in bigger and better situations. Like I say, man, when I see dudes all on rap songs talking about, oh, you can't go to your hood and go in the hood and security and all of that. I always think to myself, if I'm making millions of dollars, why the heck is I even coming to the hood? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just being honest. I might even just fly all my family or go or get a limo or something to pick everybody up and they just come to the house and we just have a cookout or something. But like I say, man, I'm just not with the chilling in the hood and being around uh, people that ain't got nothing. And like, as soon as you come out there, I'm going to give you a prime example. You, gotta, you just got to, let's say you got a big basketball deal that's worth $100 million or whatever. And you say, you know what, I'm about to go to my hood. And you go out there with big chains on half a million dollar jewelry, Rolexes and all this type of thing on your wrist. And you go out, get out your nice car and the guy's looking at you. Oh, yeah, if he out here tonight, I'm going to get him. You know what I mean? And you just come to visit family. You ain't, got, you ain't starting no trouble. And that's how it is in that environment. It's wolves out here, man. You know what I'm saying? These people don't give a damn about what you're doing in your life. You know what I mean? Or how many kids you got. All they care about is themselves. And that's why I keep trying to tell people, man, yeah, it's cool to visit family. Yeah, you laugh and you had those good moments. But it's like you have to make new moments, new situations, new type of things, man. You know what I mean? I did, he was tapped on this before. I just feel like Nip was trying to do is create in the neighborhood that he grew up in because there's not a lot of opportunities in those neighborhoods. But the dangerous thing about it is that he played it so close and he didn't have security around him. That was all that was the dangerous thing because it's always a dude that's out there that's mine that's not all the way there. Jealousy, going through depression. Now, I mean, the dude was a dirty dude, man. You got to think about it. This dude didn't have anything, man. His house was dirty, the girl said, and he couldn't even afford to buy himself a hamburger. You know what I mean? And he had to borrow money for that. You know what I mean? He probably went to look the ass for a couple of dollars. You know what I mean? So like I say, man, uh, this situation, man, comes down to being able to separate yourself away from these environments and be able to put yourself in better placement and not be going back to those dark placements. I mean, God got you out of there for a reason and you're blessed now. Let's let's the elevate. You know what I mean, like I said before, big you whole argument is that he wouldn't have no ties to uh, Nipsey Hussle. So why would he be involved in anything like this? You know what I mean? But like I say, man, everybody flaming Big U. They're flaming Sanisha, Cowboy. Now I was seeing a couple of people come at Rand Paul and trying to figure out why is, why is it that he ain't he got away. No shots. I don't put no, no shots on nobody. He did. But like I say, people is coming at Rand Paul real hard. You know what I mean? Because they feel like he was doing some fishy stuff like that, too. You know what I mean? They feel like um he, he, he was part of the setup, too. You dig what I'm saying? But like I say, I can't speak on if he was or he won't. I just read the comments and I look up the information. And a lot of people coming at Rand Paul really crucial. You know what I'm saying? I even had a person um <clears throat> say something to me about it, and I was like, "Wow!" You know what I mean? I was like, "I, I, I was like, like I said, when you got all these pieces around like this, and you look at the video footage, it's it's almost suspect." You know what I mean? Because like I say, can't nobody outrun no bullets. You know what I mean? So I don't know how he was able to get out of there without getting a shell or a shot off on him. You know what I mean? He was gone like in the smoke. You know what I mean? Everybody trying to figure out why ain't nobody come back and help Nip, or nobody ain't grab the piece, or nobody came out and helped Nip. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, these so-called friends out here, man, be the falsest ones. You did, like I said before, if it was Jay Stone or them niggas like that, Pat and all of them, them niggas, would them niggas it would have been some problem. But like I said, them guys wasn't around. You dig what I'm saying? I mean, you had Cowboy, which I don't see anybody talking to Cowboy within the uh, All My Yen thing. You know what I'm saying? I don't see nobody rocking with none of them guys um, that was out there, Ryan Paul or none of that. You know what I mean? I didn't see no Carrie Lincoln video with Black Sound with none of them guys. You know what I mean? I just think everybody under suspicion at this point. You know what I mean? Everybody's suspect. You know what I mean? But like I said, it ain't no love within the, the, them right now. And I feel like Big U, I don't think you ever see a Big U and Black Sam are really doing anything too serious. You know what I mean? Because the relationship is not there. And Black Sam was going to put some holes in uh, Big U ass. I mean, allegedly, that's when the story that came out. You know what I mean? That that, that Black Sam wasn't fucking around with Big U. He was going to really smoke his ass. You know what I mean? Like I said, that was, some, that was some cold shit. You know what I mean? Like I say, man, he wasn't playing about Nip. And he was going to really bust a hole in um, Big U ass. You know what I mean? If he really kept on fucking around. He was saying Big U was getting bullied in jail and getting beat up and stuff like that. That's what they were saying, man. You know what I mean? They were saying Big U wasn't no big dog out there. But like I said, y'all let me know in the comment section.